on this Sunday afternoon. We've got baseball for you here today from St. Louis. It's the Pirates and the Cardinals coming up from Bush Stadium. And yesterday was for the birds. Today the Buckos try to even the series for the head on back home. And uh, try not to bobble this one here today. It's the Pirates and the Cardinals here in the series finale. And welcome into the booth. Joe Block and Bob Walk with you here today as the Pirates. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. This weekend from Bush Stadium and Nick Kingham will make his fifth major league start today and boy that uh, debut that he had against the Cardinals uh, arguably there wasn't one uh, better than that ever uh, and uh, he hopes to follow it up with a strong effort again here today. Yeah when you come on to the scene and uh, you know, threaten to throw a perfect game uh, that, that's a pretty good uh, opening bid. <laughs> <laughs> It was something to watch and it was against the Cardinals obviously so today he's going to be thinking back uh, to that game and what went right for him uh, and very very little that went wrong. He should be a confident young right hander when he takes the hill this afternoon. Now there's nobody in the Cardinals lineup that had a hit against the Paul DeYoung the only man that did on the disabled list for the Cardinals and he's pitched well since that first game. Too. Well, yes he has uh, and it hasn't gone as smoothly in his next three starts. Uh, which uh, wasn't necessarily in my mind a bad thing. We got to see some different aspects of how he pitches. I think uh, when he's run into a problem inning he's always been able to regroup and and continue on and pitch pretty well. So uh, all in all uh, it's been a good start to his career and he'll be throwing to Francisco Cervelli today back in the lineup and getting the day off yesterday and oh, he has uh, continued to be all season long just a, a huge offensive weapon. Absolutely. When he's uh, got a day off, when he's not in the lineup, uh, you know the whole off offense feels it. And uh, you know what's really, I think, special about his offense this year is it, it's been at such clutch moments. Uh, uh, the, the two out RBIs, and we've talked about it over and over and over again. But that is really special to a team. It, it, it provides not only the runs but a great pickup. Yeah, leading baseball with 25 two out RBIs for. Cervelli and the Pirates will face Michael Walker. He's been awfully good this season, and the Pirates will have their first look at the right hander here today.
Frazier, David Freeze, and uh, some of the other bench guys getting a start this afternoon against the Cardinals here in St. Louis against Michael Walker. Top 10 in ERA, eight consecutive starts with allowing two runs or fewer. So uh, it'll be a formidable challenge today. Yeah, it really will be. He is uh, uh, turning into one of the better pitchers uh, in in baseball, certainly this season. A great start, 6 and 1, 271. Uh, good record against the Pirates. He's just 26 years old. So, uh, you know, he's still, uh, every year, still learning, still in that upswing. And uh, this was a, a nice step for him this year, at least the start first couple months uh, of this season. Yeah, already in his sixth season, but yeah, about the same age as uh, the Pirates started today. Nick Kingham, that'll be the pitching matchup here this afternoon from St. Louis. And let's go back to our studios. Dan Potash checks in with a game break. appreciation and use hashtag hats off for heroes t-mobile will donate one dollar for each post and by the law firm of bordis and bordis bordis and bordis fighting for justice let's go bucks it is a beautiful afternoon here in st louis weather is cool a little bit after that front move through yesterday so it'll be warm but uh, spring-like here in the midwest not as humid uh, as it was the first three days. 
Very, very pleasant uh, walk over from the hotel this morning. And no rain in the forecast. A little bit yesterday. Did not uh, preclude play, so. Cardinals in their Sunday best. See if the Pirates can figure out Walker. First time looking at him this season, and the Pirates RAV4 lineup this afternoon for Clint Hurdle. Adam Frazier will get the leadoff spot. Austin Meadows still hitting over 400, with Starling Marte hitting third. Josh Bell's played in every game this season. Francisco Savelli back in the lineup hitting fifth. Then Freeze and Polanco six and seven. Sean Rodriguez gets the start against the righty, and Nick Kingham batting nine. And there you see uh, Walker's numbers as we were talking earlier. He's still, uh, despite the fact that he's been around for quite a while, just 26 years old. Really having a great start uh, to this year for the Cardinals. Opponent batting average, a low 219, not giving up a lot of hits. And the Honda defense for the Cardinals, Ozuna, Pham, and Bader will battle the breeze today. Carpenter, Munoz, Wong, and Martinez around the horn. No, that's at the top of the stadium. We don't know what the, the wind's doing down on the field. You know, there's always the eddies and things that uh, can fool you in a big ballpark like this. But at the top of the stadium, anyway, out by the scoreboard, the, the wind is blowing straight out to right field. So that may help balls hit that way. Should have knocked down Colton Wong's ball yesterday, uh, the game winner after Meadows tying it with a home run of the night. Wong for the third time, game winning home run against the Pirates. Mm -hmm. Not a home run hitter. Got us over the years a few times. It's definitely true. He's kind of like one of those pesky type guys that uh, for a long time it was like he and John Jay. <laughs> John Jay was here. Yeah. Uh, one of those two guys would would do something uh, on most nights that seemed to really throw a wrench into the works. It was unavoidable. Try to spot the cloud. Won't see it today. Adam Frazier. Pirates going with some of the guys with good career numbers against Waka. In their lineup today. Frazier, one of them. He's homered at six at bats. It's a beautiful 81 degrees today. So Frazier gets the start at second. With Josh Harrison. Uh, had some uh, flu like symptoms but played yesterday so feeling better over the weekend. Nice change up from walk on that. That one he's pretty balanced as far as his pitch selection but. The change up's got a slight lead and. Uh, the frequency of the off speed pitches. No clouds so a lot of sun. Contrast today. And Marvin Hudson working the plate today. James Hoy over at first. Ben Walcott, the umpire at second base. The crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, umpires third base. There's Mr. Kellogg. Austin Meadows named yesterday the National League Rookie of the Month. Even though he got called up uh, just for the final two weeks of the season or for, of the month and uh, still registered yeah, big enough numbers. You're only here for two weeks the first two weeks of your career and you win Rookie of the Month. <laughs> One of the uh, best starts to a career you'll find. Now I, you know I mentioned on the our open. That I, you know, I keep expecting him to have you know, a couple of poor games in a row. I mean, it happens to everybody, and it will happen to Meadows. But right now, you just you know have to enjoy this. Uh, 
as it's unfolding in front of us. Well, he's hit righties, he's hit lefties, he's hit some uh, for some clutch hits, including that game tying home run in the ninth yesterday. He's played the field well, he's run the bases, he's played all three outfield positions. But he won't hit 400 forever. He's doing it all. They've talked to Bones. So he can help him with the laundry also. <laughs> and Walker able to strike him out. I've always thought that the changeup is uh, the, probably the pitch that gives the young hitters the most trouble when they first get up and I think it's because in the minor leagues that change up is uh, not very refined by anybody you're facing it's kind of a rare to come across a quality change up guy in the minors that's something that you know, guys start to develop uh, you know last maybe triple A sometimes after they get to the big leagues we hear so much about the Pirates Emphasizing the change up with their young pitchers, and still uh, we, we see a lot of them get to the major leagues, and they're still working on that pitch. It may never even materialize for them. I first noticed it watching Gene Garber, the closer for the Braves, hit hard but foul, and it seemed like the younger guys, especially rookies, they, you know, he had a great change up, and he would just eat them alive with it. The older players, guys that have been around, say 10 years, not so much. And they, they know how to make that adjustment. And a twisting delivery came up with the Pirates. Gene Garber. Pennsylvania guy. I yeah. think he is from the eastern part of the state, though. He is, yeah. Worked uh, with the Braves in spring training every year. Doing well. Last time I talked to him, last spring. Marte gets a piece to stay alive here in this first inning. A very consistent performer and has a home run in his career against Walker. He's faced him a lot. Right to Walk. Walker starts off with a 1 2 3 first inning. Now Nick Kingham, second try around against the Cardinals. For Bush Stadium. And the Cardinals will come to bat here in the bottom of the first. Pirates have kept Matt Carpenter at bay throughout the series. He will lead things off for Mike Matheny's St. Louis Cardinals. Tommy Pham will bat in the second spot with Martinez back in the lineup. Ozuna cleans up. Harrison Bader on his birthday will bat fifth. General Munoz, a hero in the opener, with Wong the hero yesterday. Pinion Walker, the battery, bats eight and nine. For the Cardinals. And there is Nick's uh, 
numbers from his first four big league starts. Uh, not too shabby. Love the strikeout to walk ratio. 25 strikeouts, four walks, four walks and four major league starts to begin a career. I like that's uh, the sign of that. His style is, uh, you know, trying to spot the ball. He, he's not rearing back and just trying to throw a strike with uh, you know, some overpowering type pitch. Yeah, average velocity, a, a tick above average. And he'll try to move it in and out. Doesn't get the call on that borderline pitch. Carpenter, uh, he can be very patient up there at times. I mean, he will not swing unless it's something that he thinks is a more of a middle of the plate pitch. Especially to begin the game. He's been moved back into that leadoff role. Drew more than 100 walks last year and has led the league in walks before. And the defense. For the Pirates this afternoon, Sean Rodriguez gets started shortstop with Adam Frazier across from him. Frazier Bell on the corners. Meadows, Marte, and Polanco from left to right in the outfield, and Cervelli back behind the plate. So a rare walk against Kingham. Tommy Pham ripping that single after a RBI single yesterday. Still four for his previous 43, but he might be starting to turn it around a little. Yeah, it's a good thing that uh, this is our last game against the Cardinals because it does look like uh, he's starting to swing the bat a little bit better. Uh, he is a quality player. You know, he's going to get hot here, and so that the numbers will even out. Just don't let him get hot against us. Two on to start against Kingham. No stranger to working out of some jams. Slowly hit, but Martinez doesn't run well, and they're not going to get anybody. Yeah, that should have been a double play with uh, Martinez running. It, you know, just as you said, Kingham has been. Working out of some jams uh, in his last couple starts, I thought, well, here we go. He's going to get a double play and uh, quickly get out of this one. But nobody out now, and base is loaded. It's a big jam. He's had a tough series. He had a couple of in between hops that ate him up. Those aren't easy plays. That one was, though. Sean would tell you all day he'd make that play, but uh, an error. He's hoping right now, please hit me another ground ball right here. He wants a redeemer. Well, let's see how the young man can uh, work out of some. Some marmalade here. This yeah. is a little thicker than jam. Got some big hunks, pieces. Rinds of. Yeah. Ozuna has made it four nothing Cardinals. Four batters in. Seeing Kingham work out of these jams here in his first four major league starts, but well, not here in this first inning. Just a, an absolute hanging slider right down the pipe. And those are uh, you know pitches you just can't you know make. You can throw Osuna that say you know with nobody on base to get strike one, and, and if this happens, it's not a disaster. But with the bases loaded, you've got to be a little more sure of your control. You can't just. You know, spin one down the middle like that. Fifth home run for Ozuna. He had 37 last year. Yeah, not a guy that uh, if you make a mistake, he, he will often take advantage. Well, a couple of starts ago, uh, Kingham gave up a three spot in the first inning. 
And then he was able to, to string together a, a bunch of zeros after that. And, and so, you know, it's encouraging to see what he did in that game. And now that's, you, you know, he's capable of doing that now. That was back against the Padres on the 19th. And he had given up three runs before there was a second out. He ended up going six innings, and that was all he allowed. Yep, so that's what he's going to have to do today. Yeah, in that start, he only allowed two hits the rest of the way, two singles. So against Waka, who uh, has not allowed more than two runs in any of his last eight starts, he's going to have to change that mode, but the Pirates have been able to get to some of the better starters. Uh, Lester, Michaelis, uh, and perform better than expected against them offensively. So that's going to be how this afternoon has to go. 24th birthday for Harrison Bader. Will get his first out. He was able to to stay out of the strike zone that at bat. I think he only went into the strike zone one time, and he made pitches that uh, Bader had to offer at. And that's what you really want. You you want that hitter to get himself out on your pitches. You don't want to have to come to them. Walk, a single, a probable double play ball that was booted to load him up, and then the home run by Ozuna. Now, Jairo Munoz, who won the game for the Cardinals back on Thursday, with his three run home run off Felipe Vasquez. Which was a, a game that we were down four runs in the first in inning. In the first inning. Good. Quick swing. <laughs> That's going to be held, though. But he's not a guy you know, that comes up to the plate. You look at it and go, "Wow, this guy you think would have some good power." But he's hit a couple already in a short time with the car. They got him in a trade for Stephen Piscotty with the A's in the offseason. Cardinals uh, sending Piscotty to. Basically back home. Yeah. Doing him a, a personal favor. And yeah, this should do it. A very quiet three outs after the grand slam by Ozuna. Pirates will play from behind down for nothing.
authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And through an inning. Pirates down 4 0 on the Ozuna Grand Slam. The Kingham got the ground ball he needed, but the error keeping him loaded. And then the uh, first pitch Grand Slam. And now the Pirates bats are going to have to come from behind down four. And like you mentioned, Bob, not only did they do it in this series, they ended up losing the game because they gave up five runs in the ninth. Yeah, they, they actually were what, eight. Eight to five lead to going into the ninth inning. So, yeah, four runs. That's a, that's a big number, but it's not totally. If you're going to give up four runs, do it the first. It's now you get the rest of the game. Pirates beat the White Sox four weeks ago, down four nothing after an inning. They beat the White Sox down four runs after five innings the next day, and they have come from behind down five runs against the Cardinals in a game back in April to win. So. Pirates are no strangers to that. It has the height, but not the distance. One out for Bell. Four up and four down against Waka. Francisco Cervelli. He also has some good numbers. Four for 11 with a home run. Lifetime. And for Waka, you know, really having a nice season. At Two really so so years. The past couple. Very average seasons from the Cardinals right hander, but. Uh, and they want more from that. Yeah. The expectations, uh, he, as always, uh, I think, been thought of here as a top of the rotation type guy. I came on the scene this year uh, pitching like it. Yeah, came on the scene and, and pitched so well at such a young age that I think the expectations obviously grew because of it. Pitched very well in the postseason as a rookie, a year after being drafted. In that 13 season. Has been an all star before back in 15. Batter requests time. Yeah. Apologizing. And Cervelli strikes out. And here in St. Louis, that will bring up the hometown kid, David Freeze. Wildwood, and you can tell that not only does he get a good hand, about half the people stand when it comes <laughs> to the plate there for that first time. World Series hero, nice. right. loved here. Doesn't probably get the uh, same in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Yeah, it took the World Series away from the Rangers. It was funny how he and Naftali Feliz were teammates with the Pirates. For a time, Feliz, uh, the victim of Freeze extending Game Six, but the uh, Championship Series and MVP of the World Series as well. 
that 11 season. They're getting the first start of the series and ending the second. Six up and six down against Michael Walker. He threw a bullpen session today and uh, that's the first time that he's thrown in that regard uh, with the finger and uh, still would have to face hitters whether uh, in a simulated game or rehabilitation assignment but moving forward progressing toward a return wind a little factor today yeah that one got moved by that wind for sure. I think that's the ones that we will notice so very high hit balls get up into that breeze that's blowing across the top of the stadium. There you see this World uh, Series banners uh, are at the very top and they are all pushing pretty briskly out toward the river. We didn't see that though on the uh, bell ball out to right though. So I wonder if this is more to left and center. The ball will tell us. Yep. Well, nine pitches in and four batters in. Cardinals had four runs. Since then, Kingham has sent down four in a row. Going six innings today. I mean, he threw 19 pitches in that first inning. He ends up going six innings today. It's not a bad outing overall, but he's got to put, like you said, put zeros up the rest of the way. That's not easy to do, but it can be done, and that would give the Pirates a chance to come back in this game. And he has uh, done it, as we mentioned, in that one game where he gave up the three runs, and that's, um, you know, one of the games I'd gone back to a couple of times and talked about that I uh, was impressed by the fact that he was able to do that. And a lot of young youngsters will early in their career they give up three early they're going to be out of there yeah. by the third. They just can't put the pieces back. Yeah. Recovers to strike out Waka. And uh, let's go downstairs. Robbie and Spikowski uh, talking about the win. Yeah, so I hear you guys talking about how it might be different down low than it is up top, and I'm standing way up here in right field at a brand new area called the Budweiser Terrace. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but you talk about the way the wind is blowing that last fly out to left field. To, to, 
to use a lack of a better term, it is insanely windy up here. So who knows what kind of havoc it might play on fly balls. But it kind of calmed down for just a second. But overall, you have to like hold your stuff. The shirts, people's shirts, hats, everything's blowing around like crazy as it gets higher in the air. So it might be pretty interesting. We see some high fly balls where they end up landing. Hair staying put though, Robbie, always looking good. Well, when you overdo the hair gel, Joe, this is one of the benefits. <laughs> it doesn't move, but if you see it right now, it's picking up pretty good. You'll see hair and shirts blowing over all over the place here at any given time. Look forward to your uh, description of that new part of this ballpark in a little bit. We did a little remodeling here inside the stadium. Marte able to get there. Ball hanging up just long enough. One, two, three inning. Invites you to make your next group outing the event of the year at PNC Park. Put together a group of 15 or more, and you can enjoy special discounts, one of a kind experiences like access on the field, or everyone can take home a Pirates cap. For more info, go to pirates.com/groups. Good to see all the black and gold here in St. Louis. The gateway to the West. The Midwest. If they're in the Midwest, how could they be the gateway to the West? They would be in the eastern, western part. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say the gateway to the Midwest. To be honest with you. Well, the, the gateway to the West is the, the gateway arch. Yeah, right? that's. You're beginning the. Yeah, you're the West. You're heading west into the wilderness. There it is. You're west of the Mississippi. You're, who knows what's out there? Years ago. Well, I mean, as late as 1952 in baseball, this was the westernmost city in baseball. And maybe was after. I don't know if Milwaukee's farther east than this or not. Milwaukee is east of the Mississippi, I know. Oh, yes, it is, yeah, because it runs up through Minnesota. So, yeah, uh, 58 then when the uh, Giants and Dodgers moved out to California. So yeah, this is as far west as you go in baseball until the late 50s. That's why they put St. Louis in the Eastern Division. Cincinnati in the West. And Atlanta. <laughs> Back yeah. in the uh, yeah, that didn't make much sense the way they broke things up. Yes, yeah, uh, 25 years ago, that's how the divisions were. Atlanta would play in division games against the Dodgers, and Padres. But the Cardinals wouldn't. So then we made three divisions. No, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and in that time, you know, the Pirates. I was thinking about it today. You know, they're on this long stretch here of games within the division, and they haven't done great. But they've been able to 
uh, overall have a winning record against the division this year something they've only done once since uh, 1994 when the NL Central was formed uh, back in 2013 the only year that they've had a winning record against the division all those years even the years they go to the postseason so I think overall if the Pirates are going to be in it which at this point they are they've got to have a winning mark against the division so far they have. Well they've never come in first place in the, in the central division so yeah, that it kind of makes sense in, a, in, in that way and so maybe this would be the year I mean they need to pull out of this uh, little bad spot they're in here probably sooner than later but you play good in your division you have a winning record you get an excellent shot at winning the thing. Michael Walker doing his best Nick Kingham impression so far. He has blanked them through three. Pirates Baseball on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. Visit Barrel.com to learn more about our three conveniently located collision centers. And by Allegheny Health Network, official medical provider of the Pittsburgh Pirates and fans like you. Let's go Bucks! Cardinals with an early 4-0 lead. Coming to bat here in the third. We were just talking about the National League Central formed back in 1994. Yeah, and so far this year, the Pirates uh, 14 and 11. Won the first four series. They've lost the last three, though. A chance to earn a split here in St. Louis. That's always, you know, if you're on the road playing a four game series, if you can earn a split on the road, that's great. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I like that, uh, that start against the uh, Central to, at this point, but now. Going forward, you need to continue to improve those numbers. The Pirates are playing better ball. The problem has been uh, that you know, last night, kind of a tip of the cap game. They never led, but uh, it was a 3 2 game, good ball game. Uh, that first one of the series was tough. Taking a three run lead into the ninth and not winning it. That was a difficult loss. Yeah. No sugar coating that one. Yeah. But the last four games, you know, it feels like the Pirates are playing better baseball. It just, uh, an unfortunate defensive miscue behind Kingham and then uh, you know he, he's going to make a mistake pitch and uh, that was capitalized on hopefully the bus will have uh, the bats will have enough uh, for him today fam disputing whether he really caught that on the fly so that foul tip oh you certainly did Three strikeouts for Kingham. Now that first pitch to Fam was that center square, you know, right down the middle. 
Um, that's you know, nobody on trying to get strike one. Not a huge problem. And then he's a, a power not hitter not too. Not a big mistake. Yeah, he's but a power if he throws too. that pitch to Fan with the bases loaded, nobody out, I think that's a big mistake. And that's what that's the the deal in that first inning. You, you can't make that mistake pitch in that spot. Do you have to immediately become more fine, even though uh, it's I the think first so, inning? Yeah, I, yeah. When the bases are loaded, you know, one swing, you're down four runs. So yeah, you have to be you have to be a little more picky about where you're throwing the ball. Martinez lines out, and that will bring up Ozuna, who wasn't waiting around, and pushing him for the fifth home run of the year. You know, and only Kingham knows in his own mind. Whether he was trying to throw a nice little slider on the outside corner, or was he just kind of trying to spin one in there, strike one, get ahead, so he could work from an 0-1 count, thinking, okay, first ball, that, you know, slider, he's probably not going to jump all over. It. Yeah, you're right. He might have been trying to yeah, hit an edge. It could have been it. a not a mental error, but a physical error that led to that pitch right down the middle. Uh, you know, every time there's a ball down the middle, it's not. You know, we really don't know what was the thinking was behind that pitch. Now we we can guess and can look at what the situation was and and try to put ourselves in the whoever the pitcher might be in his head. But usually you're not trying to put a pitch in that spot. There are times in a game where yeah, I got. Like if Walker spins one up, you know, up by four with nobody on, just to you know get ahead, and break a ball. I mean, if you throw ten of those, how many are going to go out of the ballpark? Yeah. Certainly not going to be the majority of outcomes. Like that time, gets underneath it, a pitch on the edge of the zone. So Kingham has retired nine in a row since the Grand Slam. Stadium. I'm Robbie Smikowski hanging out in one of the renovated areas here at the ballpark way at top right field. It's called the Budweiser Terrace. Brand new area for 2018. They have two full service bars. There's one of them right here. They have two open air grills. There's one of those right over there. And as you make your way back and walk along this 20,000 square foot area, there is a ton of cabana seating. 
Now, they removed 1,000 seats to make this area possible, and it's accessible to anyone that has a ticket here to a Cardinals game at Bush Stadium. So for those Pirate fans, you might be contemplating on coming out here in August and September when the Buccos come back. It's a great area to check out. All you need is a ticket to get in and a desire to hang out and watch the game with some panoramic views of one of the best parks in baseball. Joe and Bob. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, you were seeing that trend in uh, baseball now that a lot of uh, teams trying to take some of those uh, farther reaches, especially in the bigger ballparks. And, yeah, and I think the Rockies said uh, kind of the first yes, ones that did yeah. that. They disassembled almost the entire upper deck of their uh, right um, field section and, and and turned it into a specialty type, uh, you know, seating and things like the uh, the Budweiser Terrace. It's a good idea. I mean, there's a few days a week, or excuse me, a year that you're going to kind of maybe miss those seats, but more often than not, that's going to bring more people to the ball game because you have areas like that for them to go and, and hang out in. So they're not just in their seat for the entire nine innings. They can get up, move around, go someplace like that. I mean, the the modern ballpark is a, is an amazing place. Yeah, and. Uh, you think about uh, yeah, and that's uh, where it is. I mean, when you have those uh, sellouts where you have standing room, for then folks you're up there, miss those seats. But oh, no, and folks can sit up there. I well, mean, yeah, you know. you're still going to have people up there, but yeah, not the thousand seats just sitting there where nobody's in them most of the time. Make the uh, money back on beverages. 11 up, 11 down against Waka. Kingham on the other end, uh, since the Grand Slam hasn't allowed a base runner, so he's doing what he needs to do to keep the Pirates in the game, but Waka doing what he needs to do so far to keep the Pirates out of the game. Been in the wind up all day. Pirates coming in the seventh most runs per game out of the 30 teams. So that offense that really for most of the last two seasons has been one of the least productive in all of baseball has continued. This is game number 59 today that continue to be one of the top quarter uh, of teams uh, offensively speaking throughout baseball. They have not really slipped all year. A lot of, uh, a lot of depth in this lineup up and down. And everybody is uh, healthy. There's a lot of contributors. And you think about, you know, you see Marte, uh, we just saw Meadows uh, shuffling in one of four outfielders, all of whom have been productive. I mean, I include Polanco. He's been, he's had stretches where he's been very productive. And so you got four guys there. That yeah, Polanco, well, like, uh, you were pointing out to me just yesterday. In fact, I think I, uh, Mentioned it on the uh, radio post game. It, uh, extra base hits. He's in the top ten. Yeah, in the uh, National League. The National not, League. Not, so. Just on the Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> Pirates looking for their first base runner. Michael Walker, perfect through four.
Toyota all-wheel drive RAV4 thinning. Toyota, what drives you? 4-0 St. Louis as they come to bat here in the last half of the fourth. Worm's eye view. Harrison Bader on his 24th birthday. Nick Kingham got him a strikeout his first time around. How thoughtful. Breezy down on the field, too. Yeah, you can see. Kingdom's uh, uniform flapping around. Well, so far, he's done everything uh, we've asked him to do, right? After the Grand Slam? After the Grand Slam, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, trying to keep the club in the game. What, why do you think he's been effective since then? Well, the reason he was unaffected was because he hung a, hung a pitch and got punished for it. Uh, you know, uh, up to that it was a a leadoff walk, a single, an error that should have been a double play ball. And then for whatever reason, we don't know if it's a mental or physical error, he hung a little slider to a guy with real good power and it cost him for four runs. So there's no you know you really don't need to dig too deep on that one to, to figure out what happened. And it happened quick. It's like one of those things is before you even notice it, you're like, wow, I'm four runs down and, uh, and not really even hardly loose yet. But the, uh, the the double play ball was huge. Absolutely huge play in this game to this point. Even though uh, Walk is doing well, you still got to believe that the. Uh, you gonna make a run. There will be a point in this game where we have the tying run either on base or at the plate. Vader strikes out. Uh, he was ahead 0-2. Kingham then went full and finally strikes out Vader for the second time today. Chase after a uh, <laughs> ball well out of the strike zone. Yeah, it started off a ball, it looked like. Four strikeouts for Kingham. Now, the other thing we'll look for as the game progresses how deep can Waka go? Because we saw yesterday the Cardinals. Mike Matheny pretty evident uh, that leading up to Norris who blew his first save of the season yesterday uh, he's not very confident in uh, the guys that he's got out there because he went with Austin Gomber who was making his major league debut he went with him for three innings yesterday with a one run lead Gomber pitched three scoreless and hitless innings of relief in the sixth seventh and eighth. So Walker, who's uh, obviously been very efficient pitch-wise so far, if he does run into trouble, if he does run up a couple of big pitch innings, that could bode well. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Kingham. Munoz called out on strikes. Gonna have a nice strikeout after that for sure. Strikeout totals have been uh, going down uh, every start since that first one. Go the other way this afternoon. Yeah, he struck out nine Cardinals in his debut. Four strikeouts in his last start. It's the Cubs. And a good pitch count 55 here in the fourth. Certainly still on pace to give the Pirates six innings, which these days is an above average. Start in terms of length. We talk about how good Waka has been this year in the top 10 in ERA in the National League, but Waka averaging 
about five and a half innings per start. Which is about average. So it's not like you know these guys that are pitching among the elite are giving you even six innings a start let alone seven. Very very few guys that approach that. Kingham has gone full out a pair of hitters in the inning. Blanco playing very deep and right. Wong with a base hit. Well, Wong does have some decent pop in his bat. He's in the home run hitter, but he, you can consider him an extra base guy. And with two outs, I think Pirates just uh, kind of pushing him back a little, trying to guard against the, the two out double. And then you take a chance of giving up a two out single. But as long as he stays at first, uh, that hopefully won't be that big of a deal. First base runner allowed by Kingham since the grand slam. You get a guy at second base and then just a singles a run and that's the way you worry about the two out double. It'll take a couple of singles back to back. One of them from Walker is going from first. Has stolen one base, been thrown out twice. He's going. Freeze with the catcher running or jogging, really. Able to get the final out. Stays 4 0 St. Louis. Pirates ended in 1986, but he did share a few stories with us that his father passed along to him when he was with the Pirates. The stories of when he got traded, he just cried when he we left. He came here to St. Louis, but at the same time, uh, he loved playing both places here and uh, and in Pittsburgh as well. So uh, I have a lot of memories, uh, seeing all those pictures of my dad, videos, um, having the, the gold gloves that he won over there. And uh, it, it was a special, special, special team for him. Uh, it was a team that, that gave me the opportunity of uh, playing a game of baseball and gave me the opportunity of uh, having a better life, getting out of the Dominican Republic. And what a career Tony had with the Pirates. He did make four all-star teams in a Bucko uniform and won three gold gloves. And the other thing he said to Francisco is, hey, when you go to PNC Park, do me a favor. Take a walk around and find any pictures of me. Take a picture of it and send it to me. He said, all right, that's one of the first things I'll do when I get to the ballpark. That's uh, great to hear. Thanks, Robbie, for that. What do you recall about 
playing with Tony Pena. Well, the, the, the defense is the thing that always sticks out at you. That if you did your part out there as far as the running game, just halfway decent, nobody was going to steal a base on you. Had that patented uh, occasional you know, stick a leg out, just kind of almost sitting back behind the plate. I always remember loving his style too. Old number six. Yeah, that's that's what I remember. There's that arm. That's the part I remember. Throwing out the Hall of Famer Tim, Tim Raines. Raines. Yeah. He's been penalized. <laughs> Is that what I said on the scoreboard? Yeah, but, yeah, somebody he, used to put up on the scoreboard yeah. after he'd throw somebody out. And the uh, son, Francisco, filling in for the injured Yadier Molina. The Cardinals uh, look like they're going to get him back on Tuesday, Molina. So Pena will return to uh, backup duties. Father son uh, catching duo in St. Louis. And Tony Pena, one of the uh, Six Pirates to win three gold gloves with the Pirates. And if uh, Marte ever wins another, then uh, he'll join that group. Speaking of accolades, Cervelli, the way that he has performed this year, you know, the All Star balloting has just started to come out. Hard to argue that uh, he might be the catcher, especially with the very popular Molina having been hurt for the last month. Why wouldn't Cervelli be on that All Star team this year? Absolutely, I think he's the the lead dog for me. I, if you look at performance, yeah. Pirates.com/vote. You can vote if you're voting for you know who's. Doing the best instead of just who's there every year. Which is sometimes the way it happens. That would be something too because he's such a performer. You know he's 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 done so well, especially offensively, but he's been above average behind the plate as well. But just to see him tip his cap to the opposing pitcher. Or some of the uh, animated gestures he makes if he disagrees with a strike call or has a pitch come inside on him. I think that would just add to the, the yes, flair. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's that's part of the enjoyment of watching him play the game is that he does it with a little style, a little flair. It's not offensive. You know, some players they go overboard to where they're like showing somebody up, but he's not like that. He's got it figured out of how to, you know, how to not be. Just like melt toast out there, but at the same time, he doesn't show, ever show anybody up, and uh, and doesn't matter if it's a teammate or an opposition. They they have a lot of respect for him, and they enjoy watching him play themselves. Yeah, what do you like about the way that Cervelli plays? Hashtag Bucks Booth. I'm sure we haven't covered all of them, all the different things he does. He's a fan favorite in Pittsburgh, and uh, certainly know that Pirate fans can get him into the All Star game this year. He deserves it. On base at better than 400 this year. One of the best hitters, period, in the National League, especially after the first uh, couple of weeks of the season. Leading in OPS. Seven for 16 with a home run lifetime against Walker. And speaking of those numbers, our AARP take on, and you see what he has done lifetime against Walker. It's also a Home run, a couple of RBIs, a couple of doubles as well. A big reason why he's in there today. Plus, uh, got to reward the uh, St. Louis folks. 
They love watching freaks. Fam recovering to make the second out. Well, you can understand why Cervelli had gone so far and and, and drew that throw. It, it looked like Fam had misplayed it, and that ball had a great shot at falling in. So now Cervelli, he knows it's a force out at second base. He's got to be able to beat any kind of a throw in there. It's not a tag play. Uh, he was between a rock and a hard place as far as how far do I go? How far do I go? And now he's got a long run back. That play and that the little dunker into right field makes it so tough. Uh, even the one in the right field is even tougher because it's a short throw in the first. How far do you go get off the bag in case it's not caught? You don't want to be forced at second base. But you don't want to be doubled off either. It, <laughs> it, it really puts a little bit of pressure on you. you know, especially if you're not a, you know, a speed guy. You've you got to play it dead perfect. And Cervelli did even a perfect throw. Yeah, Marte, Marte can, there's a little, a little wiggle <laughs> room there for him. I mean, he can, he can go maybe five six steps and then still beat to play at second base if the ball is uh, handled on a bounce. Lone Pirates base runner today on a walk. Here in the fifth inning. Uh, good time for a home run. Yeah take the deficit in half. Wind blowing. Uh, out to right field at least up high it is. Should carry that way. The wind has uh, been changing a bit today, too. Polanco with eight home runs on the season. And he's been, you know, the last couple of games making a very good hard contact. Uh, it's Encouraging. He's been streaky, but uh, leads the team in walks. And has worked the count full. Put Cervelli in motion with two outs. And Polanco does work the walk. They might have got a call there. Let's go back to our studios now. Dan Potash with a game break. And here, four nothing, St. Louis. Pirates have two on their first two base runners of the day, both on walks. Rodriguez a chance to turn into one. And the inning ends. It will stay 4 0 St. Louis.
Grand slam by Ozuna. Four batters into the game. And we asked you to tell us what you like about Cervelli. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Some of our Point Park social media. Gary saying always engaged in the game. Constantly chattering. <laughs> Absolutely. Chaz the sportsmanship. Has fun playing the game. Yes. I tell you I couldn't agree more with any of those statements. That's, that's definitely him. Yeah. All of that. Well, we love watching him and it'd be great to have him part of a national audience next month. Get the pitcher to lead off does Kingham here in the fifth. Kind of odd how things sometimes work out. You know, a lot of talk uh, in the offseason about how they were going to back off the workload of yeah. uh, Cervelli and really mix in that, you know, Diaz a lot more, but you know, no number was uh, was ever put on it. But Cervelli has gotten off to such a great start this year, hitting the ball so well, such a major part of the offense. It's hard to get him out of that lineup. Uh, he's. Out been there able, almost every game. Yeah, been able to keep him healthy, and you know, last year he had four stints on the DL. Now that was the the thinking was to try to get him to uh, rest up and walk a first out to to give him regular rest and not have him out there so often, and maybe he would be able to just stay healthier. Austin, the uh, passion and excitement to every pitch. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times, <laughs> just about everything he's doing. You have to watch. He's got excitement and joy, childlike fun. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it definitely can feel that. He plays the same way right now as he played as a 12 year old little, like, little ligger, I guarantee you. Just with him, it'll never change. And it's just as passionate uh, when you talk to him. In the afternoon before a game, mm -hmm. about any, anything really. But last year, yeah, Cervelli uh, played in only 34 of the final 104 games the Pirates played, and you know they, they missed him quite a bit. Plus, I mean, this is a a year that he has not had. As a professional, because remember, he, you know, with the Yankees, he just would not stay healthy, or he was relegated to a backup role, or both. And in his time healthy with the Pirates, we've seen the batting average, we've seen on base percentage. He's played by Freeze and Carpenter for the second out. But we have not seen this kind of power from Cervelli, and he's not only been one of the best. Offensive catch been one of the best offensive players period. Yeah, Freeze uh, really having a tough time with that son fighting it fighting it and had to take it all the way to the ground. Tough play for a catcher. But well, that that case, falls but beyond third base and he's. You know, hustling down there. And of all the guys that are on the field. He's the one that's the most wore out. He's up and down, up and down, on his knees all day long. It's not really a super hot day today, but still, and all that equipment hanging on him, he throws the mask off and, and runs down in case he can help out with that ball. If nothing else, just a guide freeze. You got room, you got room. That right there, I mean, really exemplifies what we're talking about, the way he plays the game. Pass Bell. Fram. He's going to be limited to a single with two outs. Nice play by Polanco to cut it off. Polanco's defense has picked up a couple of ticks along yes. with the, the bat of late. Coinciding with the call up of Meadows. It's we've seen there. the last uh, week or Look two at this throw. I mean that was a something on it. One hop perfect strike on second base. Look, it, Replaying it himself there. <laughs> yeah, he 
raced over to cut it off. I mean, that's a big swing, too, because you put that runner in scoring position, especially a guy with plus speed like Fam, two outs, base hit, easily scores. Now, it's going to take an extra base hit. Martinez. Kingham has not allowed a man in scoring position since the grand slam by Ozuna. Four batters in. That has accounted for all the runs in this game. Nine pitches in, down four runs, but has not wavered since. The only two base runners against Kingham have been two two out singles since that time. King's spot is uh, due up next inning, so this may be his last inning anyway. Down four, needs some offense. Sure-handed of uh, an infielder that we have. This one slides out of the glove. Not a routine play. And this is fairly uh, hard hit to his backhand, but he'll make that nine out of ten times. Second error of the year. They did give it an error. Oh, I, I'm assuming on that. Yes, indeed, it is an error. I thought that being a hometown. You know, they I might, mean, he should have gotten the out. Might give, give the guy a hit. Yeah. And you know, I, I really truly believe that the scorekeeping has gotten better than, say, 30 years ago, as far as that kind of favoritism type stuff. I used to think, especially here in uh, St. Louis, that it was, they always kind of favored the Cardinals a little. Well, now baseball can change yeah, the scores. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the one of the things that maybe has happened. So I don't, don't know. Maybe it's just you don't want to get a call from know, New York and uh, you always uh, think we've changed it, one of your calls. You're always you know seeing things. I have always had through the eyes of a pirate, so maybe I'm a little biased. No, I think that's true. Nice friendly hop there for Frazier. And Kingham gets out of it. His spot due up to lead off the order in the sixth.
students, you can sign up for the Pirates Papa John's Student Pass to get exclusive ticket offers. You can get a text when a deal is available, and if you accept it, the tickets are sent to you via your mobile device. Plus, you get a free Papa John's pizza when you make your first purchase. Sign up at pirates.com slash student pass or text code student to 61592. Josh Harrison will pinch hit for Kingham. Trying to have a couple of table setters in front of Meadows and Marte. Let's make this the inning right here where they get something against Waka. Jay Hay, two for 20 lifetime against Waka. That's bound to turn around. There's Stephen Brault. Last pitched on Monday, two thirds of an inning, so he's got plenty of arm in there. Out to left. And that wind knocked it down. Wow. Either that or Ozuna had uh, no idea where it was. And I think there might have been a little top spin on that line drive. All those things combined. In, in, in. All the way over. I got it. Looked like he was doing the cornerback drills. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Just need the cones out there. Two quick outs for Waka. Pirates still looking for their first hit. Yeah, we could uh, use a. Single just to break up this no hitter so we don't have to watch that anymore. Yeah, the Pirates with no hits right now. Walker throwing a no hitter. There's a big zero right there in the hit column for Walker who's throwing a no hitter right now. No hitter, no hitter, no hitter, no hitter, no hitter. No, no hitter. hits for Walker. None right. given up yet. Pirates have not had a hit today, so. What we need to do is we need to trick somebody that's rooting for the Cardinals into saying no hitter. Oh, is that what yeah. needs to take place? Yeah, it really. I've never thought it. The, the jinx is it really doesn't work when we say it because we're rooting against yeah, it to begin we, with. So we need to find somebody that. Well, I think uh, between innings you should go talk to Mike Shannon and uh, tell him to. Write it down on a piece of paper and say, if you read this, I'll give you some money or something like that. And just see what he said. See if he says it. I'm going to ask Nancy. Oh, yeah. And what happens uh, when a pitcher doesn't allow a hit? What do they call that? I'm trying to, and then maybe she'll say that phrase. Right. Walker has walked too. Both last inning. And that has kept his pitch count relatively efficient. 78 here with two outs of the sixth. Cardinals lately beleaguered bullpen may not be used anytime soon. Well, the way uh, Meadows' career has gone to this point, it would make sense for him to be the guy that breaks this up. Probably hitting a. I mean, he's trying to check a lot of boxes real fast in his career, breaking up a no hitter. Yeah, not on that pitch. Walker has no hit the Pirates through six. Still four nothing, St. Louis.
Stephen Brault will pick up for Nick Kingham. And uh, yesterday on Instagram, whenever we came back to St. Louis, I'm reminded of when I made my debut. Such a beautiful stadium, great ba baseball atmosphere, some intense, well fought games. Looking forward to the series capper tomorrow. And uh, Christopher Horner with the photograph there. On that memorable day for Stephen Brawl. Well rested today. He has uh, last pitched on Monday. Pitched uh, consecutive days for the first time in his entire life. Last two times around. He has been a versatile part of uh, this team, a starting long relief, sometimes to come in just to get a lefty out. Get a hit, run. And if, you know, we're playing one of those crazy long games, he'll be an outfield. That's that's exactly right. Hadn't thought about that. Numbers uh, so far on the year. 14 games. Uh, what about four or five of those were starts, right? Five. Five of them. Facing Harrison Bader, 0 for 2 with two strikeouts on his birthday. Sound good. Maybe someone will give him a new bat for his birthday. There you go. Well, how about uh, Kingham at least trying to keep the Pirates in the game? Four zeros after being down four runs, nine pitches into the game. Yeah, you, know, you can't. I mean, he threw the the home run pitch. There's no getting around that. But also, you have to mention that. I shouldn't have been in that position to throw that pitch. Uh, could have easily been two outs and a man at third instead of bases loaded, nobody out. Either way, the way the Waka has pitched, I mean, the Pirates have yet to register a hit. That's a good point. Now, you were saying last inning that in order to change that, the Pirates uh, need some help, I guess, right? There's jinxing help, is that? Yeah, when they come back up. We'll, we'll oh, okay, you've got. Got some information. I okay. think it might help us. Uh, I saw you doing some intel between innings there. Jairo Munoz over two today. Another rookie for the Cardinals. They have tried to withstand. Make a, that sometimes double digits on the DL. They're going to get Yadier Molina back on Tuesday, and probably Carlos Martinez as well back to their rotation. They're getting healthier. Still missing their starting shortstop, Paul De Jong. Had a surgery on his left hand. Munoz will get a walk. There's De Jong. Alex Reyes. They thought they uh, had him back with that left hand. Yeah, it's still going to be a while. Looks like. It, it really is a pretty uh, incredible the DL list with a lot of players on there and some very important players to their season. Alex Alex Reyes they finally thought they got him back. He's going to miss another month. Adam Wainwright no telling when he'll come back. And four members of their bullpen the guys that they were counting on including the high priced free agent Greg Holland who was very ineffective. Yeah, Molina might be the, the biggest one because he affects both the offense yeah. and the pitching. That's a, a huge blow to have him out of there. Cardinals catchers are still not thrown out an attempted base dealer all year. So, you know, having Molina back there. Plus, he was having one of his better offensive seasons when he hit the DL. Cervelli. Calling time, going out, they're going to use one of these visits and. Ray thought, hey, that's a good idea. I need to go out there and put my two cents in. Well, if the 
the Pirates do get something going offensively, they're still hanging around in this game. Uh, but if it gets much more one sided in the favor of the Cardinals, then. Now throw strikes. Uh, that's uh, what's going on right now. Trying to secure a series victory. The Pirates wanting to come from behind to earn a split here in this brief road trip. Borderline, but doesn't get it. Three and oh on Colton Wong. His velocity has been up uh, since moving into the bullpen. Not uh, because he's trying to throw harder necessarily, but he's trying to be more, uh, uh, I guess, more committed to each pitch, I guess, was paraphrasing what he said. And uh, rather than getting lulled into that misnomer, that you got to kind of keep yourself going for the whole game. Strike him out, throw him out. Nicely turned. Cervelli and the Brault combined on that strike him out, throw him out, double play to end the Cardinals threat of the sixth. And a good tag there by Rodriguez coming over to nail Munoz for the final out. Now let's get ahead. Being thrown out trying to steal to end the inning. A little bit of a limp going on right there. I'm in conversation with uh, one of the uh, athletic trainers. Maybe the knee. Other than a crash landing, I didn't see anything that 
really significant. He's all right. He's 23. He's fine. <laughs> and now we can get back to breaking up this no hitter. How are you going to do that? Us saying no hitter really. It didn't work. It, it, well, that's not effective because we're wanting the no hitter to end. So you have to find somebody that really wants the the Cardinals to to win. Roots for him generally, you know, maybe not right this second. Does it have to be a uniform personnel member? Or? No, it could be anybody. I mean, a uniform personnel it would be great, but that I can't go down their dugout. So, best I could do was find a Cardinal fan up here around us, and I did find one. I'm not going to name name. I want to protect this person, but uh, I did get him to admit that generally he does root for the Cardinals. He likes the Cardinals. And I said, well, you know what Walker is doing right now? And he said, yes, he's throwing a no hitter. <laughs> and I said, thank you. That's just what we needed. So a Cardinal fan did mention that Walker is throwing a no hitter. And so that's the last that batter should, he's going to get. That should apply, apply some pressure to the baseball gods to put it into this. That on the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. That's been a big reason why today. Change up disappears. So I guess Bell will get the hit then. First one. That would be my guess. Ooh. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. That's took the foul. That's a good, good rip at it. Well, we've seen a lot, uh, especially this year in baseball, uh, the no hitters taken into the seventh, maybe eighth inning. And the starting pitcher getting pulled. And uh, for Waka, his pitch count's pretty efficient. He's thrown as many as 119 in a start in his major league career. So you know, right now, that doesn't seem to be an issue. If it does get into the later innings. I'm doing the best I can pulling up all my. No hitter information. My computer, so I have it, so that I don't have to use it. I like that part. That's that's good, Jake's work. We put on our score bug there. We put on the line score a moment ago. So the hits. Well, six and two thirds for Waka. You ever get this far? I think I went six innings. And you're thinking about it by that point, aren't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. But I believe that I think the first hitter of the seventh got a hit off mm -hmm. me, if I remember right. And that's what I was thinking about with him is, you know, at what point is he maybe affected by his success today? Well, Maybe he's already I, I think there. Thinking about it, you know, nothing wrong with that. But being overcome by it mm -hmm. uh, would be the uh, the difference. Walker's in his sixth season now, so he's pitched deep into the postseason. He's had success. He's had a chance to hang his head as well, giving up that home run to Travis Ishikawa. Memorable sequence against the Giants in 2014 in the championship series. So he's seen a lot. Best game of uh, Walker's career was a three hit shot out of the Mets last year. It was only a career complete game. He has allowed two walks. 
on what is a uh, warm but uh, a mild afternoon. It was 81 at game time. Right curveball strikes out Cervelli. Michael Walker has no hit the Pirates through seven innings this afternoon. With two on and nobody out, Sean Rodriguez getting a start at short today. Probably would have been a double play ball. And then the next pitch, wouldn't you know it, Marcel Ozuna, that hanging slider, a grand slam. 4 nothing Cardinals. It's still that way because of the way Michael Walker has pitched this afternoon. Yeah, he's really uh, you know, been perfect. I mean, just absolutely fabulous with that changeup. Spotting his fastball, moving it around. But so far, ever since that grand slam, the Pirate pitchers have pretty much shut down the Cardinals also. Not much uh, offense on either side this afternoon. Walk is at 95 pitches. Great to hit. No hitter aside, I mean, the, the Cardinals' pen has not been all that reliable with all the injuries that they've had. And uh, I'm not confident to say that uh, Mike Matheny would even want to use Bud Norris today after throwing 21, and then he's been pitching a lot. That's not a safe situation either. That's right, four run game right now. So, one out. Pirates offering ticket values to get every fan to come on out to PNC Park. And one of those, the Giant Eagle Advantage Card Discount. You can use it to save up to ten dollars on seats throughout the ballpark, Sunday through Friday games. Save on tickets. Go to Pirates.com/AdvantageCard. Nice round of applause for Walker, who has been in this boat before, taking a no-hitter late into a game. In fact, he's one of a list of guys. Who has been an out away from a no hitter? He's still six from that today, but back in September of 13, his rookie season, he was facing the Washington Nationals, and Ryan Zimmerman was the final man in his way and uh, struck a hit off Waka to spoil a chance at a no hitter. Stand in his way today. As Brault gets that call. Well, he's not taking any chances about getting on base. He's just going up there and 
take his strike out and go back. Think about the next six outs. You think that's kind of what he was thinking about? Yeah. And he'll get right back out there. Uh, Carpenter didn't do him any favors, did he? <laughs> Not much of a rest for Waka. He'll go back out. Freeze Polanco and Rodriguez coming up in the eighth. St. Louis, the score. Here in St. Louis, we remind you as you enjoy a Miller Light, look forward to the whole true moment later in today's game. Michael Walker, seven no hit innings against this good Pirates offense. 95 pitches. He's been down this road before. Being an out away from a no hitter. Five years ago. The last time. That the uh, Pirates. Were no hit by the Cardinals. Bob Gibson. Back in 1971. But six outs to go. Yeah, the Pirates still have a chance to win this game if they can get something going here against Waka. It's a long time, a teammate. Not that long time, but a teammate, David Freeze. You know, he'd love to do it. Freeze, of course, here as Waka. Beginning his career. Well, it's been a great hit to change it, hasn't it? Unhittable. Here it is. The dive on that. He's sometimes he gets a, a real big break. Sometimes. It's Missing bats. Action in both bullpens right now. Gregory Polanco. Martinez right there along the line. Seven and two thirds. No hit innings for Walker. Pirates have some guys on their bench, some lefties, Dickerson, Moran. They'll stick with Rodriguez here. Jordan Hicks. Last year in A ball. 
Same in the hit column. Ninety seven. Hundred and second pitch of the game and might have been his. Best velocity of the day. Two and two. Walker has thrown as many as 119 pitches. That was in that near no hitter that David Fries was playing third base for. That afternoon against Washington. Got Pretty away big. with one there. That was a. Breaking ball right in that center square. I have a piece of it. This crowd electrified with every pitch. Yeah, there is a lot of them on their feet, especially down that. Seems like the left field line. Huh? It's the section that's kind of most into it. And now three and two. Walker has walked two batters. Cervelli and Polanco back to the fifth. Those have been the only two pirate base runners. Still looking for their first hit. Matt Carpenter. His only teammate the last time Michael Walker took a no hitter into the ninth. That's still with the Cardinals. And he'll take one again. And your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier to the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go, Bucks! A Marcelo Zuna grand slam in the first, and Michael Walker, eight no hit innings. That tells you the story. Stephen Brault went two in relief. Walker for the second time in his career taking a no hitter into the ninth. Pirates will have a pinch hitter Frazier and Meadows do up. 
try to thwart the no hit bid and to try to see if they can mount a comeback but first it's up to Feliz to put up another zero. Feliz numbers on the uh, this season a lot of strikeouts almost uh, lost in 30 to 29 and just 23 innings. Glenn Hurdle saying yesterday that slider right there trying to get that sharper again it is not been very sharp this season and looked like he really went through a little spat of um, just lack of command and walking. If he sits there for 10 minutes it'll feel like 10 hours. Was uh, so wild that one start they uh, thought that there might be something injury with it. Remember they, mm -hmm. they went out in the middle of the inning. Has a bit since they've been trying to work with him on the side. Kind of check and see if he was physically okay. And that outing like on Tuesday. Meadows has the first out. It's a whole new ball game with RBI Baseball 18. RBI Baseball 18 delivers an all-new franchise mode and much more. RBI Baseball 18 available now. Learn more at rbigame.com. Rated E for everyone. What was it like sitting in the dugout with the uh, Drayback had a couple of bids? You just stay away from a guy, right? But oh yeah, you go nowhere, nowhere near him. Uh, you try to, you know, after you you notice that it's going on, like say, you know, fourth inning maybe, you know, you're like, wow, is that not a hit. You, you tend to start when uh, when you're on defense, going back to your defensive position. You know, wherever you happen to be sitting in the dugout, you'd always go. But now, when you were hitting, you'd do anything you want. But as soon as uh, Doug would go back, you would go to your spot, and that's where you would stay. And you stay away. From whoever's throwing that no hitter. Cardinals are doing the same thing. Yep. Nobody is anywhere near him. Just alone in his thoughts. Baseball, there is so many superstitions. I don't think there's any sport that has you know, more of that kind of stuff than baseball. It's odd the way it is. How did all this come about? But it's there. Deeply rooted in tradition, it's just been around for so long. Yeah, that's probably the answer. It's, it's, you know, the sport goes back to the Civil War. The Reds, the first professional team, founded 149 years ago. And the Cardinals, they've been around for more than a century. They have issued just nine no hitters in their illustrious history. Last of which, Bud Smith, Bob Gibson, he threw one against the Pirates at Three Rivers. You may have been there. 1971. And this is going to be the first extra base hit for the Cardinals since that first inning. A good job by Meadows to make it contested. Played the rebound well. Nice throw in the second. But still, it's a double all the way. One out double off Feliz. That inside fastball. Now Ozuna. One swing of the bat, all the difference. Back in the first inning, a grand slam. What if he had swung and missed at that pitch? Be no score right now. Remind you of uh, last August when Rich Hill of the Dodgers was perfect through eight and had no hit the Pirates into the ninth and through the ninth. 
but because the Dodgers had not scored they had to pitch into the 10th yeah. and then of course Josh Harrison with the game winning home run but by virtue of having a lead Waka can see the end point. Even though Hill, the last August, had no hit the Pirates through nine innings, doesn't get credit for a no hitter. You think about perhaps the greatest game ever pitched the Pirates, Harvey Haddix, against the Milwaukee Braves. Twelve perfect innings before losing in the 13th. Going away, and not getting a no hitter, made him more famous than. Yeah. He would have threw a nine inning no hitter that day. Nobody would ever talk about it. At least not that often since then. But not getting the no hitter can make you more famous uh, than throwing it. Armando Galarraga, for instance. It's of one Detroit. of the one of the no non no hitters that everybody will bring up for years and years. It led to yeah, he was perfect and uh, Jason Donald. Out by a step and a half, but called safe, and that's what led the instant replay. Changed the game of baseball forever. At that time, there was no recourse. Full here on Ozuna. With one out. Pirates return to PNC Park Tuesday for a brief three game homestand against the Dodgers. Joe Musgrove gets the start for the Pirates. Ross Stripling for the Dodgers. Our coverage begins at 6 30 with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason. Well, with a couple of base runners aboard. And now Ray Searich coming out. Michael Walker is spending a lot of time for the first time really mm -hmm. uh, since that first inning he's spending a lot of time in the dugout. Yep. Just, I don't know what kind of effect it, I mean, realistically it should not have any effect whatsoever might even be giving him a little bit of a rest right now but the, mentally it's just more and more time to think about this and what's going on. No activity it's Walker's game. 107 pitches. Eight no hit innings. Probably running through that weak ground ball to short that Ryan Zimmerman beat out for a base hit, ending his other no hit bid in the ninth. Five years ago. Birthday boy Bader, 0 for 3. Just 15 minutes of his life so far. Well, he's showing a good fastball velocity wise in this game. Having a little time to rest up. Good for a relief pitcher to have maybe four or five days in a row off to recharge. He's been one of the workhorses coming out of the bullpen uh, this year.
for a long time almost every eighth inning we had the, the lead or it was tied Feliz was the guy that was in the ball game. Birthday. With a couple strikeouts. Three. 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 Yeah. Hat trick. Birthday hat trick. I was thinking about the Walker too, the uh, in the division series against the Pirates that pivotal game four. Had a no-hitter going into the eighth inning when Pedro Alvarez hit the home run. That was the only oh, hit. I forgot that, yeah. And uh, started to think, okay, all right, well, maybe the, it was only a two to one game after the home run. So the Pirates down a run at that point. Of course, if they win that game, they go on to the championship series. But Walker and the Cardinals kept them hitless the rest of the way. And, and of course, winning game five. But uh, so Walker has, that was twice in the same year. One in the eighth inning in the postseason, one in the ninth inning in the regular season. All within about a month's time where Waka had taken a no-hitter late. Now again here today. Eight no-hit innings. Only pirate base runners today, Cervelli and Polanco both drawing walks in the fifth. On a two out Feliz thrown 26 pitches here in this eighth inning. Trying to get him right after being removed from a late inning role. Thirteen balls, 13 strikes. There's still a little a bit of a command issue going on with it. For a spell, he was very good. Falling on some hard times last few. And that is going to get the Cardinals a run. Martinez scores from second, and that ball deflected off Feliz. He had been uh, hit with balls a couple of times this year. He finishes up. His delivery with his right side to the plate, so he's kind of defenseless in these situations. And of course, Rodriguez trying to go up the middle once he sees that ball heading that way. There's nobody home. Yeah, he's breaking to his left, uh, going after the ground ball, and so he's out of position once the carom heads the left. Feliz is done, and the long half inning continues. Richard Rodriguez coming back out.
wait, wait, wait. Uh, he's getting uh, to where he might have to uh, grab a bat here soon. Wait to say, inning is gone. Rodriguez up. Does the arm stiffen up if you wait a long time? But well, yeah, it's like a rain delay at some point. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't think we're there yet. Ozuna has moved to third. Munoz to first. He's been able to uh, have a pretty quick return to the mound every time. The Cardinals have been pretty quiet offensively until this inning. He's been sitting there for 16 minutes. That's not determinable. But I'm again, uh, again, it, I'm sure it feels yeah, like 16 if, minutes. If it, if it goes on beyond the say one more hitter, you know, it, I would say 20 minutes is starting to get like okay, you know, that's all. After throwing 107 yeah, pitches today, yeah. 20 minutes is a long wait. And if Wong reaches, then he's going to have to go into the on-deck circle. To sit in the shady confines yeah, it would of the almost dugout. be good for him to get in a bat and maybe you know, at least swing the bat a little bit. Get some blood flowing again. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's I've never obviously been in a position where I've got this kind of a a deal going and where he has sat this long. He's thinking about it, working his arm, trying to stay loose. Yeah, he might get his chance now. I'll be a little happy with that pop up. Now Walker in the dugout for about 17 minutes or so. And he's been here before entering the ninth with a no hitter. Rodriguez, the pitcher, will be pinch hit for. And Frazier and Meadows. Walker bidding for his first career no hitter and just the tenth for the Cardinals. The Pirates trying to break it up and make it just a footnote in history. Big standing ovation as he takes the hill here tonight. No hits, two walks. From the moment he got out onto that mound, he has been dominant all afternoon long. Uh, yes, he has. The, the thing I, that we've talked about the most, I think, is the changeup. That's been a great pitch for him. Especially when he's kept it down, he's got some guys to chase it down out of the strike zone. That's one of them right there to Marte. The fans, uh, once he got past about the fifth inning, you could see it really pick up some steam in the, in the seats. Last couple innings, everybody has been standing for that last out. And now everybody will be standing the entire inning. It's only worked. With a man on to three batters today. He's been able to be comfortable in the wine. Took a no hitter into the ninth against Washington five years ago and was an out away before Ryan Zimmerman singled to short a weekly hit ball that Pete Cosma couldn't come up with. These are the other nine men. The great Bob Gibson has done it. Bob Force, the only Cardinal to do it twice. And all those years, all those very good Cardinal teams, but the rare pantheon of greatness. And Waka bidding to be part of that. And the 44,000 plus will eventually claim to be 440,000 plus. <laughs> okay. If You're he right, gets three I mean, more Everybody outs. wants to witness one, and that's why they're so excited right now. And the, uh, the Buckos got three outs to set them all down. Colin Moran, the first man to try. He's never faced Waka. Pinch hitting for Rodriguez. And Waka sat for about 17 minutes or so between innings. The first pitch right down the pipe center. Cut only 90 miles an hour. A little stiffness, perhaps. You see the location of that first fastball. Quickly ahead, two strikes. 
Jerko now in at third base. And Matt Carpenter across the diamond over at first. Defensive change. The 0 2. All it takes is a little looper. Hard hit ground ball. Right between two infielders. I think the, the guys in the field are probably as least or more nervous than Walker. Carpenter is the only teammate on the field for that last time he took one in the night. And Colin Moran breaks it up with a solid and true single here in the ninth inning. And that's going to be it for him. He's coming around the ball game now. The, the, the pitch count is up at 111, and they were just letting him go out in the ninth inning for no other reason than to try to get the no hitter. So Walker, for the second time in his career, takes a no hitter into the ninth, and maybe, just maybe, that long wait between innings. Help the Pirates get that first hit and Colin Moran the rookie sends Walker to the showers with a rousing standing ovation. Michael Walker finally permitting a hit. Colin Moran, a pinch hit single to begin the ninth. First one today for the Pirates. And Walker will finally yield to a reliever, Jordan Hicks. And Jordan Hicks, a very hard thrower. Well, they wouldn't know that by looking at the strikeout numbers. It doesn't really generate a lot of swings and misses. Does generate the ground balls, though. Got a. Good rate of uh, of that, and that's you know, one of the things you look at, I think, for a, a reliever. Guy can get the ball on the ground. Walker, second time in his career taking a no-hitter into the ninth, but it remains just nine Cardinals to ever throw one. A lot of things have to go your way, and there has to be some luck involved in that, no matter who you are. And I'm glad that the Moran single was clean. solid and yeah. clean and true. Yeah, there was no, wow, is that going to be a hit or an error? No, none of that. Hard line drive over the infield in front of the right fielder, Bader. <laughs> 102 miles an hour. Yeah, got a swing and a miss on that one. So Moran had never faced 
Michael Walker. And on an 0-2 pitch. I believe that was a changeup that uh, he hit, which I thought was kind of ironic. Yeah. That was been his best pitch today. He's been getting so many outs on that and it did not get the swing and miss that he wanted. That one didn't have a lot of movement on it. You mentioned that uh, I think last inning about how he'd have had him the bottom was falling out of Murley and then there was a couple that were just pretty much straight. And this the old straight change. And I think that's what happened there. He got no movement down and away and it stayed right at the bottom part of the strike zone on that 0 2 pitch and hey that's a slow ball yeah but shows you how difficult he was to hit today eight plus one hit Meadows wraps a base hit and the Pirates with two aboard here down five of the ninth. Two young rookies with the only two hits today so far. And one on the mound. Now, Ian Hicks. What do you think they're talking about? I don't know. How do you. How do you console the pitcher when they lose one in the ninth? What did you talk with well, with, with Drayback after? Was he upset? Was he you know, glad that he pitched a good ball game? Hey, he wasn't upset. He didn't get upset. Yeah. He was one of those, you know, happy go lucky individuals that were like he was like, hey, didn't happen, you know. No big deal. They get one, Marte, no chance of doubling him up on that ball. But I think most of the time uh, the initial conversation with your fellow pitchers are like you know, what, what did you throw where was it. Why did you decide to throw that pitch you know. Somebody will say ah, oh, you should have did this or <laughs> and then the next guy is going to say well you, you made the right thing you just. Maybe it didn't go in the right spot. It's just. You know, rehashing the. the the base hit over and over again for a while. Hundred and three. This guy's got a good arm, doesn't he? That's a reason why the Cardinals kept him. He was a non-roster invitee in spring training. Last year began the year in the Midwest League at Peoria. Arte takes second on defensive indifference. Finished the year in A ball as well at Palm Beach. Skip double A, skip triple A's in the big leagues, and he's been one of their most effective relievers. Once he's backed off the fastball a little bit, get a little more movement on it. Works around like, 98 uh, to 100 most of the time. Like Slow. John, John Smiley <laughs> came up from A ball in the middle of the year. Wow. Never threw an inning in double A or triple A. The Pirates were able to break up a no hitter here in the ninth. The next step is the shutout. Base hit would probably bring a couple in with Marte's good speed at second. And if so, the Cardinals have Norris warming. 103 mile per hour ball. He's thrown as hard as 105 this year, the fastest pitches thrown in the major leagues this year. Going foul. Mm. 
Now the excitement uh, in this game has been bookended. Ozuna with a grand slam nine pitches into the Cardinals at bats in the first. Michael Walker entering the ninth with a no hitter before Colin Moran pinch hitting singling a line drive to right. Not just a spectator. Case today, timing wasn't very good as you were trying to get the split in the series. Uh, you end up losing three out of four, but wasn't anything that uh, you could have done. Walker was just that good this afternoon. Uh, I guess you're looking back on it. If the only thing you couldn't have done or, or could have done was continue to fight through with a zero-zero ball game, not give up that that big uh, home run in the first inning. And we. But that didn't happen. He was able to have that early four run cushion and he knew what to do with it. Michael Walker took the no hitter into the ninth today. He'll be the winner as the Cardinals take the series. Now let's go out to Dan and Michael. 